is spread above, I'll join the heavenly voices and sing redeeming love. Lovely old hymns. Trusting in Jesus, my Saviour divine, I have the witness that he is still mine. 315. falling, then I know the sins of earth be set on every hand. 319. I was a sinner, but now I'm free. 325.
He rescued me. Good to see you all in God's house tonight. We welcome you in the Savior's name. We're going to open our service by singing a lovely hymn. It's 240 in her own hymn book. She only touched the hem of his garment as to his side she strolled amid the crowd that gathered around him and straightway she was whole. Let's all stand and let's really sing it out with all of our hearts. 240. That's good singing. Let's bow in prayer. Let's again ask the Lord for His help as we come into His presence this evening. Our loving Father in heaven, again, we thank Thee and praise Thee for the words of this lovely hymn that we've been singing. It reminds us of what the Lord Jesus Christ can do and does do for sinners. We thank Thee, Lord, and we praise Thee For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And, O God, we pray tonight for those in the meeting, those listening on, perhaps, who are still strangers to grace and to God, that even this night that they would come and touch the hem of his garment. By faith that they would believe on the Lord Jesus and accept Christ as their Savior. O God, we recognize that it is appointed unto men once to die, but after death the judgment. And, O God, we're all going down the valley one by one, heading towards the setting of the sun. And soon, Lord, the day will come when we'll have to leave this scene of time. But, Lord, where, where will we spend eternity? O God, I pray that everyone here tonight in this gospel service will be ready and prepared for the great eternity, that they will be born again of the Spirit of God and saved by the grace of God. Lord, that's our earnest desire. And Lord, if there are those here tonight who are still strangers to grace and to God, our prayer is that they will close in with God's free offer of salvation and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, bless the meeting. We pray that you'll bless our brother Sam as he sings. Bless every part of this service. We just thank thee, Lord, for your presence with us thus far. And Lord, after the meeting, 
Bless the mission. O oh God, we do pray and commit the mission again to Thee. We ask the Lord that You would move by Your gracious Holy Spirit in that Tonic Moor area. And Lord, that there might be many who will come and find eternal redemption through the blood of the Lamb. So undertake for us now, Lord. We commit the services to Thee tonight. We just pray, Lord, that You would help us, Lord, to honor Thee and to uplift Christ. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're delighted to have our brother Sam Houston with us tonight. Sam, you're very welcome. And Sam's going to come now and he's going to bring us a couple of messages in song. Thank you, Sam. I just want to say a very sincere thanks for the blessing of being asked to come back again. So it's a good thing whenever people want you back again. Uh, that's a good sign anyway. So I hope you enjoy the message we have to sing. The first one is entitled, Ho, My Comrades. My comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus' signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven by thy grace we will see the mighty host advancing Satan leading on mighty men around us falling courage almost gone Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus, signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the glorious banner waving, hear the trumpet in our leader's name we'll triumph over every foe. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus, signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. And long the battle rages, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander, cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus, signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven by thy grace we will by thy grace we will and the next song is one that I'm sure you'll well remember oh. Could we hold on a wee minute there? The next one is a different, uh, maybe I've pressed the wrong button here, but sure what the odds anyway, we'll soon get it right. All right, Jesus bids us shine, especially for the little children. This is especially for the weans. 
Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light. Like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all for him. Well, he sees and knows it, if our light goes dim. He looks down from heaven to see us shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all around. Many kinds of darkness in this world abound. Sin and want and sorrow, so we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Well, we'd like to thank Sam for coming along tonight and singing for us, and we pray that the Lord will bless those hymns to all of our hearts. Good to see you all in the meeting tonight. We welcome you in the Savior's name, and especially if you're visiting with us, and we see some visitors in tonight, we give you a very warm welcome, and we pray that the Lord will bless you as you've come to worship with us this evening. Just like to make a few announcements very, very quickly, and we'll be as brief as we can. Do remember that the mission commences in Tonicmore Orange Hall tonight at 8 o'clock. So we give you an invitation over to Tonicmore tonight and all of this week. And we do pray that the Lord will bless those special gospel meetings. And the Reverend Julian Patterson will be preaching tonight at the mission. And our brother Sam will be coming over to sing for us this evening as well. But the mission's on every night this week, Monday through to Friday. And... There'll be different preachers each night. They're all up on the screen there, so you can take a look at them. But pray for the preachers that the Lord will bless each night. And there are invitations uh, at the door, so feel free to take one or as many as you need and give them to your friends or to your family and invite others in under the sound of God's precious, precious word. Now, on Wednesday at 12.30 p.m., we have our senior citizens' lunch here in the church. So again, all senior citizens are invited to come along and to take part in that lunch, and we would encourage you to do so. Friday night, the young people will be going over to the mission. So remember that, young people, come along on Friday evening. And also on Friday morning, we're having an early morning prayer meeting. And as I said this morning, it was very encouraging to see so many there last Friday morning. So we'll be meeting at 7 sharp this Friday morning again in the will of the Lord. Then next Lord's Day, the Sunday school, the quarter past 10. The Bible class is at 10.30. And then the service is 11.30 and 6.30 p.m., preceded by the half hour of prayer. And I'll be here, God willing, to preach next Lord's Day. And of course, the mission then next Sunday night again at 8 p.m. Now, I just want to mention the senior citizens outing again. I'm sure that most of you now have put your name on that sheet but just in case saturday the 15th of june uh, we'll be going on the senior citizens outing and if you haven't already put your name on the sheet then please do so uh, uh, as you leave the church this evening now i think that's all the announcements we're going to sing another hymn and the offering is going to be taken up it's hymn number 251 in the hymn book why do you wait dear brother Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in his sanctified throne. We'll just keep our seats as the offering for the Lord's work is taken up. 251.
Amen. We'll ask Sam to come again and bring us this final message and song. Thank you, Sam. And this next song, my friends, is entitled The Law of the Lord. And just before I sing it, I just want to say something to a brother here. Uh, I got great encouragement uh, tonight when I came here. A young brother in the Lord said to me that we had the joy of pointing him to the Lord 42 years ago. And I was so blessed, so blessed. And may others come to the Lord. You think it's 12 years of age he came to the Lord. And that was a great thing. So you're never too young to come to the Lord. And you're never too old to come to the Lord either. Anyway, we'll leave that with the Lord, between you and the Lord. And uh, I'll sing this song here now. And here we are. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, here than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Sweeter also than honey and the Again, I'd like to thank Sam for coming along and singing tonight. We do pray that the Lord will bless him in his ministry and that the Lord will bless those lovely hymns to all of our hearts tonight. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer and ask the Lord for his help as we come to the close of the meeting and as we come to consider God's word this evening. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee that we can bow humbly and reverently in thy presence. We thank thee for the law of the Lord. We thank thee that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And, O oh God, we pray as we turn to thy word just now that you would speak to every heart, especially those in the meeting, those listening on, who are still strangers to grace and to God, that even this night, Lord, that they would turn to thee and find eternal salvation through the blood of the Lamb. We thank Thee for the wonderful message of the gospel. Thank Thee that the gospel is still the power of God unto salvation to every one that believes. And Lord, we pray that You'll close us in with Yourself. Set us down in Your presence now. O God, defeat the devil. We're so conscious of his devices. And we pray, Lord, that You would speak to hearts. We thank Thee, Lord, for the speaking voice of God. 
And we pray, Lord, that men and women this night would hear that still, small voice of God speaking to them, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Therefore, to this end, fill us with thy gracious Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn in your Bible to John's Gospel, chapter 11. John's Gospel, chapter 11. And we're going to commence our reading at verse 38 of this chapter. Really, we would need to read the whole chapter. You take the time to read it when you go home. But we haven't the time tonight to read all of this chapter. But here we have the Lord Jesus, and he's standing outside the grave of Lazarus. Lazarus has died, and the Lord Jesus has come on the scene four days after Lazarus has died. And we read these words from verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Amen. We'll end our reading there, knowing the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. For a few moments tonight at the end of this service, I want to draw your attention very simply to the grave of Lazarus. That's what I want to preach about in the gospel service tonight. Lazarus, of course, had been the friend of the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, every time the Savior went to the town of Bethany where Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, lived, the Savior always abode in their home. But now something very tragic has happened. Lazarus has taken ill, and he has died. And his body has been embalmed and put into a grave. The Bible describes the grave of Lazarus here, in verse 38, as a cave with a stone lying over the entrance. And when you study this portion of Scripture in John chapter 11, and you take the time to read the portion later on, it is plain to see that Lazarus' grave was not far from where he used to live. Indeed, it was only in walking distance from his home. This man was buried only a stone's throw away from where he grew up as a boy and where he lived as a man. As you can imagine, the scene that we have before us here in this chapter is a very sad scene. Two sisters mourn the passing of their brother, and they're unconsolable. And even after the Lord Jesus comes on the scene, still Mary and Martha are grieving for their brother who has died. As we come to look at this scene tonight, as we come to consider the grave of Lazarus, very simply, I want to draw your attention to a number of things. First of all, I want you to see inside the grave of Lazarus. I want you to look inside the grave. Then secondly, I want you to look 
around the grave of Lazarus. And then thirdly, I want you to observe immediately, directly outside the tomb of Lazarus. And as we do so, there are truths here that we can see and that I want to emphasize to you tonight. And especially if you're in the meeting this evening and you're not saved, I pray that you listen very carefully because I want you to hear a very simple gospel message this evening. And my prayer is that if you're found in God's house without Christ, that you will heed the Word of God tonight and hear the Word of God tonight and come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Inside the grave, around the grave, and immediately outside the grave. First of all, what do we see when we look inside the grave of Lazarus? As we look inside the grave of Lazarus, we see death. In verse 14, we never read it, but the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, Lazarus is dead. What does it mean for the body to be dead? It means life has gone out of it. It means the process of decay has begun. It means coldness, stiffness, and lifelessness. I don't know why it is, but the sight of death always brings fear to man's heart. And as we look into this grave of Lazarus tonight, there's nothing but death and decay and lifelessness. Indeed, the body is stinking. Is not what one of the sisters said to the Lord when the Lord told his disciples to remove the stone from the entrance of the grave? By this time, Lord, he stinketh. And of course, that was the truth. As far as the body of Lazarus was concerned, he was stinking. He was decaying. Death had set in and began to consume the body of Lazarus. My friend, as we look and consider this body, this death that's in this grave, we learn two things. First of all, we learn this, that each and every one of us, sooner or later, will die. Very soon, someone will be looking upon our corpse. Very soon, someone will be gazing upon into our coffin. And that's why you and I need to prepare for the great eternity. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. And the truth is that you and I are nearer the day of our death today than we were yesterday. And that's why it is imperative for you, my friend, if you're found in the meeting or listening on and you're still outside of Christ, you need to make preparation for death and for eternity. There's no doubt that Lazarus, I believe, died suddenly. We're not told what age he was, but he took sick and he died very quickly. And of course, death comes very quickly to many. And that's the reason why, my friend, tonight you need to make that preparation for the day of your death. The problem, of course, with death is this, that we don't know when we're going to die. It's not what Isaac said, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. My friend, I pray tonight that if you're not prepared for death, and prepared for eternity, that even tonight that you will come and seek the Lord as your own and personal Savior. But also, as you look at this dead body, scripturally or spiritually rather, it speaks to us of the state of the sinner's heart and the sinner's life. The Bible tells us clearly that you and I, when we were born into this world, were born in sin. We're born in trespasses and in sins. 
Therefore, my friend, if you're in the meeting tonight and you're not saved spiritually, you're like this corpse of Lazarus. You're dead in trespasses and in sins. Just as there is no life in the corpse, spiritually speaking, there is no life in you because of sin. Just as the corpse stinks because of its decaying, so you stink before God because of the sinful nature that you have been born with. Just as the corpse is in a hopeless and helpless condition, so you, sinner, in a spiritual sense, are condemned already because of iniquity. You know what the Bible says in Isaiah 1, verse 6? From the sole of your feet to the crown of your head, there is no soundness in it, but wound, wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. And that's how God views you tonight. Well, my friend, have you ever stopped to consider your spiritual state before God? You're just like a corpse. You're dead in trespasses and in sins, far away from God tonight. And of course, that's why you need to be saved, and that's why you need to be born again of the Spirit of God. And my prayer is this evening that you will come and turn from your sin Realize and recognize that you are the sinner before God and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Inside the grave, there's death. But I want you to see, secondly, I want you to take a look around the grave of Lazarus. As we look around the grave of Lazarus here, what do we see? Well, I, I believe we can say we see despondency. Isn't that right? Around this man's grave, we have his family, i.e. his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Also, we have the Jews that had come to comfort Martha and Mary. They are standing around the grave as well. And then we have the Lord's disciples. They too are looking on. They are standing around the grave. And I want you to notice that they all, without exception, are in a state of despondency. Why? Because Lazarus is dead. And there's nothing that they can do to change that situation. They could not bring Lazarus back from the dead. They could not change this seemingly impossible situation that they're found in. Their sisters are in deep distress. Even the Jews can do nothing to help Mary and Martha, to console them. And even the disciples, there's absolutely nothing that they can do in order to change this situation. There's despondency. You know, two things that I want you to, to learn tonight about under this point. First of all, when the day of your physical death comes, you and no one else will prevent it. No one will prevent it. When the death angel comes to take you out into God's eternity, your friends will not be able to do anything. Your neighbors will not be able to do anything. The church will not be able to do anything. Because once the death angel comes, then you will go out into God's eternity. And also, as those around the grave could not bring Lazarus to life again, so humanly speaking, no one can save you from your spiritual deadness that you're in this evening. My friend, you need to be saved tonight, but I can't save you. Other Christians here can't save you. No one in your family can save you. There's no one can save you tonight as far as humans are concerned. The saints of God can pray for you. The saints of God can seek the face of the Lord for you. The preacher can plead with you tonight to come to Christ. But because of the spiritual state that you're in, we can't save you. And you can't save yourself. You can't save yourself. So, in one sense, you're in a state of despondency this evening, lost and on your way to a Christless eternity. Tonight, because of 
the nature that you have been born with, you're depraved. Indeed, the Bible tells us that clearly. That man, when he is born, is born in sin and shape and in iniquity, born far away from God and depraved. And there's nothing tonight, there's nothing tonight that you can do to redeem your precious, never-dying soul. You can't save yourself. You can't bring yourself to heaven. You can't forgive yourself for your sins. You can't cleanse your, se- your heart, your black heart, and make it white. My friend, you're in an awful situation this evening. That's why tonight you need a Savior. You see, I want very quickly to come to the third point here because it's very important. I want you to look directly outside the tomb of Lazarus. What do we see as we look directly outside the tomb of Lazarus? Well, we see a deliverer. In the tomb we see death. Around the tomb we see despondency. But standing outside the tomb of Lazarus, we see the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ is the great deliverer. Look at verse 38. Look what it says. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. So the Savior now is standing immediately outside the tomb of Lazarus. And as he stands outside the tomb of Lazarus, something wonderful happens. And we all know the story well. What a tremendous story it is. And thank God as the Savior stands outside the tomb of Lazarus, he commands the disciples to roll away the stone. And as the disciples roll away the stone, then the Lord Jesus lifts up his voice and he cries, Lazarus! Come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible tells us that Lazarus arose from the dead and he came forth. And the Lord Jesus told his disciples to loose him and let him go. My friend, you're in the meeting tonight. The truth, the lesson is simple. If you're in the meeting tonight or listening on and you're still not saved, although you can't save yourself, there's one who can. Although you can't deliver yourself from your sin and although the church can't save you and although Christians can't save you tonight, praise God there is one who can save you and one who can deliver you from the spiritual state that you're in and redeem you for time and for eternity. And that one is the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Thank God because of his death and his resurrection. Praise God you can have everlasting life tonight by coming and putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. You see, the Lord Jesus is the only one that could raise Lazarus from the dead. And he's the only one who can give you new life tonight. Thank God He can redeem your precious soul for time and for eternity. Therefore, I would say to you this evening, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Oh, thank God this evening you may have come into this meeting in your sin on your way to the lost eternity on the broad road, but thank God you can leave this meeting tonight saved and on your way to heaven and home. And thank God there's one who can do that for you. And that one is the Lord Jesus, the Savior, the Redeemer. What did Jesus say on one occasion? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And thank God that's the wonderful and glorious message of the gospel that we have to declare again this evening from this pulpit. We don't point you to a church. We don't point you to a minister. 
We point you to the one, the only one who can deliver your soul from hell, the only one who can set you free from the chains of darkness, the only one who can redeem your precious soul. And his name is Jesus, the blessed Son of God. Isn't it wonderful tonight that we have this glorious message? And what a wonderful message it is that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. My friend, where do you stand tonight with the Lord? How is it with your soul? You say to me, preacher, I would really love to be saved tonight, but could the Lord Jesus really save me? You don't know the life that I have lived. You don't know the sins that I have committed, and that is right, I don't. But there's one who does. The Lord does. And yet, although he knows all about you this evening, thank God he's willing to save you, and he's willing to forgive you. The Lord Jesus knew all about Lazarus. He knew that the body was dead. He knew that the body was decaying. And yet, the Lord stepped forward, and the Lord brought life from the dead. My friend, the Lord Jesus can give you life tonight. The Lord Jesus can change your life for time and for eternity. And all the sins that you have committed down through your life, Praise God, He will forgive each and every one of them because the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, so far hath He and will He remove thy transgressions from me. Praise God, that's the wonderful salvation and the wonderful redemption that the Lord Jesus Christ can give to sinners tonight. he give it to you. Would you not come in childlike faith and trust Him as your own and personal Redeemer. Of course, there's another truth here that is brought out when we think of the Lord standing outside the tomb of Lazarus and commanding the dead to come forth. The Lord Jesus will raise all His people up physically again someday. Indeed, we read over there, take the time to turn over to it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we read these tremendous words concerning the resurrection of the dead. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. My, what a day that's going to be when the grave gives up all its dead. When the sea give up all its dead. When the trumpet will sound. What a glorious day that's going to be. My friend, there's no doubt that the saints will arise from the grave on that day. And their soul will be reunited again to their body. They will receive an incorruptible body, and they will ever be with the Lord for all eternity. What a glorious day that will be. But you know, my friend, if you die without Christ, your body someday will be resurrected. But it will not be resurrected unto eternal life. It will be resurrected unto eternal death. The Bible describes that death as the second death the lake of fire for all eternity. That's why I would impress upon you this evening to come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. My friend, I would impress upon you tonight, seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Because what a tragedy it would be if you were to go out into eternity and die without Jesus Christ as your Savior. My friend, you would have no hope. You would have no salvation. And you would be lost forever and forever. But thank God tonight, the one who raised Lazarus from the dead can deliver your soul and can prepare you for the mansions above. My prayer is that even this evening, you would call upon the Lord and find eternal redemption through the blood of His cross. 
I pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts this evening. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee for thy mercy and thy goodness to us tonight. We thank thee for the wonderful message of the gospel. And we thank thee, Lord, that you're able to save to the uttermost all that come to thee. O God, I just pray tonight that men and women will be wise. And Lord, that they will seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. And even tonight, Lord, that they will turn from their sin and find eternal redemption through the blood of the Lamb. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Folks, we're going to sing a closing hymn tonight, 256. Where will you spend eternity? This question comes to you and me. Tell me, what shall your answer be? Where will you spend eternity? Think of these words as we stand to sing this closing hymn tonight.
Maybe the Lord has spoken to your heart tonight. Maybe he has been speaking to you for some time now. My friend, I know we have another meeting to go to, but someone else can lead that meeting. If you realize your need of Christ tonight and want to be saved this evening, you wait behind and speak to us. Just stay where you are and we'll come to you. But don't leave the meeting tonight without Christ. There's a battle going on in your heart. And that battle is going on between Satan and the Lord. Satan wants to drag you further down into sin. But the Lord wants to save you. I pray tonight that you will yield your life to Christ. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee for the word of God. And we thank thee for the Lord Jesus, our Savior and our Redeemer. And we pray, Lord, Lord, that you would defeat the devil. Oh, God, we're so conscious of his devices. We pray that you'll bind the strong man. And, oh, God, we know that he is seeking to blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine in unto them. Lord, defeat hell tonight, we pray thee. Step in, Lord, by your mighty power, even as you stepped in, Lord, at the grave of Lazarus. Oh God, we pray that you'll step in tonight and that you'll deliver souls from the deadness of their sin and draw them to the Savior. Redeem them by your precious blood. For it's in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen.